Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. From 60 days in state prison to Hollywood stardom. She was a victim of powerful circumstances that may have started in childhood. Hollywood fans went berserk trying to catch a glimpse of her ordeal in a movie that saw her riding on her ugly experience to achieve classic fame. The Wild Weed production, a film that was promoted as her true difficulty in state custody and partially censored all through its relevant years. What made Lilla Leeds become a criminal? I hope you know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Thank you for your generous comments and for the Patreons. This channel would not have been possible without you. Big thanks to those who watched the video right to the end. Declared guilty, jailed and banished, Lilla Leeds is one lady with many tales that inclined more to negativity. But that may not be the only thing that this great lady could offer society. Some say she was one superstitious-minded persona who was more than influenced by the not-too-palatable life she mingled with. Like someone once suggested, she appeared to have been ignorantly misled and punished in a society that seriously frowned at her behaviour not minding what her supposed innocence would have been. We all saw a young, promising actress, Lilla Leeds, progress from the wrong side of life after she was taken into custody by the state for a narcotic-related offence. The ugly incident and the subsequent scenarios may have given her a different identity from what she would have wanted, but when negativity becomes too much for a beautiful talent like her, a lot of questions are left unanswered. August 31st, 1948 was for Lilla a faithless day, a day that saw her feeling tranquilised, not from her usual marijuana smoke, but from the strange faces that surrounded her vicinity, the law enforcement agents that would bring her to book. The event of that day would become the foundation of all she represented in the entertainment industry. Though the 60 days in detention did not end her misfortune or the attempt to clean up her name from the scandal because the damage was extraordinary. She did realise that it was time to seek divinity as her later life activity showed, but did it change her life story? I did not think so because of her association with the threatening word marijuana in a society that strongly chastised those found guilty, especially the ladies. Her image seemed irreparable. It was reported that some minutes after midnight two undercover police officers mishandled the kitchen door and came in. They had comfortably listened to whatever was happening in her indecently equipped three-room hut in Laurel Canyon within the Hollywood neighbourhood. It was dancer Vicky Evans, her roommate, who on hearing the men threw the door open from the inside. There in the adjoining room was an entertainer, a lively blonde starlet identified as Lilla Leeds and Robin Ford, a frightened real estate gentleman. The detectives discovered big, dozy-eyed movie star Robert Mitchum. The man that takes home $3,000 weekly pay for showing on the screen as he tried to quench a burning pipe that was later confirmed as marijuana. That was it. The foursome, Mitchum, Ford, Miss Leeds and her roommate, were sunk as plainclothes officers found other incriminating materials on them. Kansas-born Lilla Lee Wilkinson, 1928, known as Lilla Leeds, moved out with her mother to Clovis, New Mexico, when Lilla was raised as a teenager. She also attended high school in Clovis before finding her way into Hollywood to try her luck in modelling and acting. Lilla was reported to have left home without informing anyone of her way about. With her beauty, talent and penetrating spirit, she found her way around. Though she was first seen operating as a dancer somewhere in St. Louis before relocating to Los Angeles where she took a job as a hat-check girl at the famous Ciro's Hotel and Nightclub. She was on her duty post the day she met and married another entertainer and conductor Jack Little. The union was later annulled when it was discovered that Jack was already in matrimony. Leeds was inspired to be an actress as she took an acting lesson from the Bliss Hayden School of Acting before she was contracted. She was a very smart young lady. It did not take long before Leeds was spotted and instantly signed by MGM even without a screen test, as she started appearing in minor parts in low-budget films. Her first Hollywood premature scandal was when she was seen in the law court trying to undo her funny marriage with Jack. Because Jack was famous in Hollywood, the news went viral and became a media sensation, with few images of the court proceeding finding its way into the newspapers. 
On the night of her arrest, Leeds and Vicky Evans, as I said earlier, were together at their undersized bungalow. Leela was, of course, in her section of the room, smouldering her cigarette and waiting for her guests. There is no way she could have known that her apartment was under surveillance by the law enforcement agents, who were also waiting for their target, Robert Mitchum, to arrive. Mitchum, the 31-year-old movie star, soon came in with his pal. Mitchum and 20-year-old actress Leela Leeds were lovers and happy smoking partners. Though she was yet to get a significant movie role as a leading lady, Lilla was already making the news headlines, but for the wrong reason, as gossip columns discuss her as a potential bad girl, even as she was said to have parted around the locality with Mitchum frequently. Heavy smoking Mitchum found so much relaxation in Leeds, who appeared to be a female version of his kind. A minute or so after Mitchum's arrival, the plainclothes men walked into the room and possibly spoiled the night party with several weeds already rolled up on Lilla's coffee table to be smouldered. Recall that in 1948 it was a serious offence to be caught with the item. It does appear as if Mitchum went through the scandal without much on his career, with some saying that it made him more popular. But it was a different story for Leeds, whose image went down hook, line and sinker. Before this regrettable incident, very little was known about Lilla Leeds. When she started dating Lana Turner's ex-husband, the muscular Steve Crane, some people thought she had a body type similar to that of Turner. Within the Leeds scandal, Crane was said to have fled to Europe to avoid getting linked with the scandalous atmosphere. A few months before her arrest, Leeds was billed to be part of The Jungle Goddess, a low-budget movie that was put together by Lippert Pictures. The movie, however, was made in her absence while she was facing justice. Making public the arrest, the police authority told Newsman that they towed the culprit to the Los Angeles County Jail and that it involved a first-degree Hollywood star in the person of Mitchum. The trial process did not quite favour Leeds, as she was the underdog. On the contrary, Mitchum, with his fame, wriggled himself out career-wise. The unpleasant incident expectedly ended Lilla Leeds' relationship with Mitchum. Some time later, after serving her punishment, Leeds became so spiritual about herself that she concluded that her roommate set her up. Thereafter, some opinionated articles appeared in the media describing Lilla Leeds as a beautiful girl with no intelligence and relating her case to an ignorant young lady in a dangerous movie industry. I'm not sure why Mitchum and Lilla's former agent labelled her as a member of an extortion ring in Hollywood, but she denied the accusation, even though it still made the headlines and further tarnished her image. But Leela also added some twist to the story by insinuating that Mitchum had been set up by some persons with ulterior motives using marijuana. While that suggestion may be true, it also attracted another controversy in the media. Less than a month after she was released, Leeds had a car accident that almost destroyed a car at Sunset Boulevard. She was saved by a friend as she escaped driving under the influence. The creation of the movie Wild Weed was two facets, to make money out of her predicament and to try to change her bad girl image, but I still doubt if the latter was ever achieved, though it ended up making her the star that she had hoped to be. Some critics also think that it helped clean up her image a little. In the movie she appeared as Anne Lester, portrayed as an innocent showgirl labouring so hard to train her brother through his education. A slippery character, christened Marky, lured her into smoking and soon recruited her to help him market it. The Anne character was finally arrested and put behind bars for sixty days, where she was seen often shouting like a madwoman. The movie ended with Anne agreeing to assist the authorities to get hold of the ringleader, Marky. The storyline was perfect in reordering her already destroyed image, but it was directly opposite of the reality, as Leela allegedly took her first marijuana consciously as a teenager during her days with Stan Kenton's band. The film was viewed by the authority as a lie and an attempt to twist facts, or to encourage marijuana intake awareness. It was subsequently prohibited from being shown in Ohio. It appeared the dangers of marijuana as the key message did not flow well for the movie, so Leeds was seen personally promoting the wild weed and providing a five-minute clip before it was shown to discourage the audience from indulging in the drug. But it seemed that the movie had already decided for itself the part that it would play, as media reports suggested, 
that it was doing the opposite of what Leeds' warning was meant to achieve in L.A. But as wild weed quickly faded, Leeds caught more trouble for herself, including drunk driving and public drunkenness. It was very obvious that too much adverse publicity was killing not just her career, but her quality of life, even as no producer was ready to offer her more movie roles. She had to pay a fine for the drunk driving offence, with a warning to stay away from a bad image. She was also tried for violating her previous bail condition, and was ordered by a California judge to move out of the state for five years. Though the judge later told the media that she was moving out of the state of her own accord, for the next day the media went berserk with screaming headlines that read, Leeds banished. In a version of the report it was stated that Leeds slightly cried when the judge disapproved of her behaviour. At this time every aspect of her life came crashing. First she lost her short-lived marriage with band leader Dean McCullum. Did she experience something like a nervous breakdown? Maybe, as allegedly reported, due mainly to her habit. She was said to have also lost a marriage proposal with the son of an Illinois statesman. Leeds in Chicago was not a different story either, as life with Irving Roslin, who was her third husband, was nothing to write home about. She worked in nightclubs, having divorced her husband, and was left with her pitiable kids. Leeds was said to have tried stealing from a gas station to support herself when almost everything about her finances was going south. Of course, with no movie career prospect, Leeds was hoping to revive her singing talent, but a lot of factors were already against meaningful progress in that regard, not when she found herself in more police trouble with more arrests and some sort of therapy. At some point she was seen in court putting on furs and Toreador slacks, while Roslin tried to cover her shame with hopeful words. It has never been this bad for this beautiful talent, as she was taken behind bars once more the following year, and accused by Chicago authorities of begging for publicity. This was a result of her decision to show wild weed in Chicago. While she was still trying to get herself together, some demons that were bent on frustrating her never went to sleep, as she had to fight custody battles for her kids that already had a history of being in and out of the children's home, while their mother tried to free herself from one trouble to another. Leeds decided in 1966 to return to base in a journey that brought her back to L.A., but this time with a score to settle. She was said to have threatened to release information to the public that would incriminate several Hollywood bigwigs. That threat ended the way it started, with nothing to show. People did not think of her as the lady that was hitched with Mitchum's arrest, so everything stayed low. The wild weed was almost out of the shelf with some irregularity, but Kroger Babs decided to repackage it as she should have said no. It recorded little success, but at some point it became Devil Weed, which was aired on late-night television in the latter part of the 1960s. Somehow it also had a brief run in theatres as a midnight movie, now referred to as The True Confessions of Lilla Leeds. At this time Leeds took a wise decision to make peace with her creator and possibly find a spiritual solution to her problem as she turned to religion. Studying and founding her church, Leeds became actively involved in local mission volunteering. That was it for a talent so much trouble in her career life that she later thought was extraordinary. At some point in her life she was asked the reason she agreed to act in the movie that talked about her ugly story. Leeds said she did it because she needed the money to keep body and soul together. I was broke, she told an interviewer. No movie offers came to her after she came out of prison custody. It was understandable that she would have been in desperate need of cash. Lilla Leeds died in 1999 of a heart attack when she was 71 and was quietly buried. Stars often slide off the top despite the fact that they shouldn't. How Peter Sellers' mental disorder tortured his loved ones. Watch this video.